Do you understand these rights as I just explained them to you? Yes. But why, why are you doing this? You can't have the evidence. <laughs> why aren't you arresting Luke Spencer right now? Nicholas, please, leave us. You are all invited back to headquarters for the next installment you of our story. You have no witnesses, no motive. Why would he kill Catherine Bell? Counselor, what, you think we came here for guidance? We'll be happy to discuss the specifics, but not here. Hands behind your back, sir. Oh, please. Nicholas, why inside you, the house. Well, why are you asking me to stay? I am not asking, I am commanding it. <clears throat> behind your back. I was getting worried. Yeah. It took a long way. You forgot something. The bread and meat and stuff you were bringing from your dad's club? Couldn't get it. I'll have to go back after closing. That's okay. Oh, I saw your father at the hospital. He said he needs to see you. He said to say that it's a family emergency. I'm sorry, Dad. It's too late to put out that fire. My mom's back. He's just afraid that I'd run into her first, and I did. Oh. How'd it go? Was she happy to see you? Yeah. Happy to see her? She's my mother. How dare you deliberately keep me in ignorance when my family is strained to the breaking point and my son has been missing for months? He wasn't missing, Laura. He just wasn't here. What else did he tell you? He told me that Nicholas had been shot at your club. Yes, he was, but not by me, and it wasn't fatal. What was that? Is that an excuse or a joke? What would you have done if you had known? I would have come home, obviously. The kid didn't want you here. How do you know? Because he said so. He could have written you a letter. He could have contacted you. I know he gets letters from you. Or he could have had his uncle do it. Never mind what Nicholas said. You are my husband. You know how I feel about both of my sons. And if they were in pain, I had a right to know. Not telling me. It's a violation of trust. What else did Lucky say? He accused me of I don't know what kind of perversion for marrying you. Well, we always said he was bright for his age. You have something you want to tell me? Lucky found out. I'm sorry. I didn't want him to, but he did. Who said that there was anything to find out? Look. When he came to you, what did he say? He said he was sick of lies. And in that moment, so was I. But, no, before that, what brought it up? I mean, who put this in his head? Oh, well, that would be your darling other son. Nicholas. No, that's yes, not possible. Yes, yes. And our son acted like our son. He scoped it out. He asked questions. He checked the facts. And he wasn't just doing some academic exercise. He wasn't just looking up a four-letter word. He's got this friend, Elizabeth yeah, Weber. Yeah, he told and... me about that. Well, 
by the time it got around to me, it was just a little late to try and turn it into an inspirational tale. Why didn't you call me? I mean, you should have called me that day, that minute. Why didn't you? Because I didn't... Because it seemed that it didn't concern you. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, what did it concern if not me and us and what our whole family is about? Laura, it's about men and power. It's about a young man coming into his power and an old man who abused his. It's about Lucky's hero worship crashing and burning and him hating my guts for it and me letting him because just maybe that's the first step to him being a better man than his father was. He's got this rage that I understand. I can even be proud of it. But I, I felt that I had to get you out of his line of fire, not only because it was fair, but because that is my job. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I, I gave birth to two sons, and neither one of them is my business. Huh? You know, you made me choose between Nicholas and this family. And I did it. I went to him, and I told him I could be nothing more than a distant relative to him. And now what you're telling me is that the best I can hope for is to be, oh, I don't know, sort of peripheral in our son's life. You let him walk out that door without giving me the slightest clue that I might have lost another son. As long as he loves you enough to despise me, you haven't lost him. But... But how can anything be put right this way? You should have forced him to stay here and just work it out. Darling, I don't force the people I love anymore. It doesn't work. It makes them angry. It makes them mistrustful. It even makes them secretive. Look, baby, I did the best I could. Next time, when it's Lulu's turn, we'll do it your way. When I was home last week, you let me believe that he was sleeping down the hall while you made love to me. I've been gone that long. Do I even know who you are anymore? That's always been your particular kindness. To know and to forget. reason why a bail hearing can't be set while you do the booking? I'll have someone call Assistant D.A. Jensen, and you two can work it out to your mutual satisfaction. Mr. Cassidyne, would you like to make a statement at this time? No, he would not. I may be handcuffed, but I haven't been gagged. I demand to be allowed to make one phone call. That is one of my remaining so-called rights, is it not? Officer Willis? Yes. See to it this man gets a phone call. Would you uh, see if Miss Jensen can join us for a minute? Yes, sir. Look, while we're waiting for Miss Jensen, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. I mind. I'll be doing the speaking around here. Now, I actually would like you to do some talking about the evidence that you have against my cousin. Only the de facto murder weapon. A handy little dagger, just the right strength and thickness for loosening old mortar, found in Stefan Cassadine's study. Do you deny that it's yours, Mr. Cassidy? Of course not. Can't you see what an obvious hoax has been committed? I have no doubt you found mortar dust on it, and no doubt you found it in my desk, because Luke Spencer meant for you to. What possible motive would he have for killing a woman that he planned to marry? Oh, that's some love story, all right. Begins with a shooting by someone that, strangely enough, Catherine never got around to naming. How do we know that this grand romance wasn't just some blind to keep her quiet? Of course, she's a lot quieter now, isn't she? Oh, that's insane. 
Anyone can see that he and Catherine are devoted to each other. They are practically inseparable from the day that they met. That's not how some of us remember it. Nicholas, please, no good can come of your being here. I'm not leaving here until you do. Ooh. Be prepared to pay rent. So your vision of their relationship was like a Marx Brothers movie? He kept trying to kill her and kill her until he got it right? And I cleverly arranged for my fiancé to be dealt the coup de grace in front of hundreds of witnesses. In fact, so great was my criminal genius that after rendering the railing unstable with a curio easily traceable to me, I dropped it into my desk instead of into the lake. Not so dumb if you plan to frame Luke Spencer for framing you. Yeah, you're a second guesser. I'd bet money that's the way you'd go. You are either an egregious simpleton or you're allied with Spencer yourself. Why don't you ask Luke Spencer if he wants to be allied with me and see what he says? Stop leering at me and keep your distance. Or you're going to what? What are you going to do, All right. Do, All right. What are you do All to right. Me? I never took you for a bully, Mac. Having someone I cared about murdered is not an improving experience for me. Mr. Cassidyne. Welcome to the system. I hope you like the looks of us, because we'll be seeing a lot of each other for a long time to come. She didn't know. Your mother? Somebody, I don't know, I guess your grandmother, told her I wasn't living at home. Everything else was uh, a shock to her. Like why I left. It's pretty cold of your father not to mourn her. She just would have been ready with some excuse. Well, since she wasn't, what'd she say? She makes excuses for him, he makes excuses for her. What's the point? I already know. It's too late to keep lying. Maybe they don't think they are. Then how screwed up is that? In her version, nobody did anything. It's just all circumstances. We'll believe that, and there's no right or wrong. There's no love or rape. It's just all bad timing. I'm lucky they've been married a long time, and they've been happy. <sighs> what was that? Sick. Sick. But you didn't think so before all this. You were happy. Well, I like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, too. There's no inviting them back. They built a marriage and a home and a family on something that is just wrong. It's just too sick to live with, so they covered it up. But just because they hid it does not mean it went away. So, what? Someone who was raped as a kid? That's all I can ever be? Elizabeth, no. What if your mother found a way out, a way not to be that anymore? Then I would want to know how. She married her rapist. How is that a way out? You're not trying to see it the way they do. You're right, I'm not. Then how can it ever be fixed? What if I did? What if I could get inside their heads? What would that mean about me? That you love them? That you're trying to no, understand? No, no. I mean, what if I put myself in my father's shoes? And they fit. Elizabeth Weber. That's how this all got started. Yeah, lucky you found her in the park and brought her here. The park? Near the fountain. How old is she? Fifteen. Is she okay? No. I never caught the man. Of course, that happens. 
and then there's no chance of anything like justice being served. It's just this unresolved public atrocity, I guess, but then how would I know? The guy did quite a number on her. I'm not sure she told anybody but Lucky. Well, there was Barbara. Uh, Lucky took off that night and went and found Bra Barbara and brought her back so she could uh, examine the girl, and I think that was a good idea. She's so young. Ah, oh, Laura, she's so young. She's got this dark hair and these big eyes and baby skin, and I... I look at her and all I can think is maybe that's what Lulu will... Lucky sort of lived through it with her and it's left him with this boiling anger that he doesn't know what to do with. I mean, he had this friend and she was funny and she was fearless one day and the next day she wasn't any of those things and... and he came to me. He wanted me to say something. He wanted me to do something to help. <laughs> he wanted to go find the guy that had done it and kill him because of what he had killed in Elizabeth. Bobby thought I should tell him right then. But I didn't agree, and I, I still don't. I, I, I don't think one thing has anything to do with the other. Now, maybe that's just self-serving, but then who am I to say, huh? Of course you shouldn't have told him. <laughs> What the hell was Bobby thinking? She, why doesn't she just mind her own business? Oh, what, what I don't understand is... Whatever made you change your mind? Lucky started making connections between what he was seeing happening to Elizabeth and what he... what he thinks happened to you with the Cassidines. And then... One day he crossed paths with Nicholas and he shot off his mouth and said that Stavros was a rapist and then Nicholas took it upon himself to set the record straight. Uh, yeah, but still. Still? Honey, still? Our son came to me and asked me flat out, what did you want me to do, lie to him? I, I don't see any reason why you would have to. Because to tell him the truth was to tell him I raped you. What? How can you say that? How can you say that to me, of all people? How can I not say that to you, of all people? Uh, it, 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 it's just not that simple. You know that. I never said it was simple. I said it was rape. Stop it! Will you just stop that? You don't get to just write the history of my life. Wasn't I even there? I mean, oh, I see. You think that I was just too young and too stupid to know what was happening to me. Back then, everybody was in such a hurry to put words in my mouth. And you're doing it. You're doing it now. No more. No more. Laura, have you never said the word? Not even to yourself in the dark? No, I, I don't have any need to see myself or you in black and white. Well, Nicholas must have heard it somewhere. Stefan. Yeah, Stefan, and where did he hear it if not from you? You see, we come back around again, full circle to the source. And baby, who could blame you in the middle of some lonely soul-bearing moment to say it? You thought I was dead anyway. But if you ask why our son is gone and why he spits on both of us, that is the answer. Do you think that I would do that? Speak to an outsider about the most intimate and, and difficult things between us? And paint you all in one color like a criminal? Like an animal in his eyes? Laura, you were alone. His brother's captive. He was sympathetic. 
He was commanded by Stavros, like you. He was ground under Helena's heel, like you. Maybe you didn't think of him as an outsider. He was. And he wasn't, I mean... He, he was kind to me. Almost like a friend. He was really my only friend. You have to understand, I... I was taken away from everything that I knew or that I loved. I thought that you were dead. So, yes, I confided in him. And we did the, the things you do. We, we told each other our stories. And he asked about you and, and how we met and how we fell in love. You know, kind of questions that anybody would ask. Yes. But how did he get the answers that nobody else could? That was his own interpretation. I mean, that, that must have just been him jumping to conclusions. I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe, maybe I stumbled over that one bad night and then he just assumed the rest or, you know, he put his own label on it. I, I swear to you, Luke, I swear. Wait, 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 wait. One bad night? That's how you remember it? Well, that's what we had. I haven't forgotten, Luke. No, I'm not delusional, and I don't have a, a psychological block. I know what I said to Jesse, and to the police, and, and to Scotty. But Luke, I was, our marriage is as old as I was then. And it speaks with as much authority. When we were falling in love, we had one bad night. Oh, Laura. And I will not go back there. I will not relive it. Not for you, not for Lucky, not for anyone. You're uh, afraid. Because you think that maybe you could do the same thing he did? Lucky, that's not true. They're my parents. They made me. I am them. No, no. rape is not inherited. It's not in your genes. Well, don't they say that abusers pass it on? Generation to generation, aren't there statistics? Elizabeth, I spent my whole life wanting to be like him, exactly like him. What if I am? What if I am? I think about it all the time. Then don't! What if I have too much to drink? What if I think I'm gonna die and I see some girl I have a crush on, or God forbid, an obsession with? What if there's music playing, or I'm walking through the park and I see some girl sitting on a bench, and I think to myself, why not? No one would know like about it. listen to me. You could never do that. And even if you don't know what I do... Maybe you don't know me. Maybe you just think just you do. Just stop. Stop this. Jeez, Lucky, you slept on my floor by my bed and you watched over me while I was sleeping. It was like the, an angel came to Earth to help me. I trust you with my life. Those voices in your head, I know what those are. Those are the voices that tell me that was my fault that I got raped. But you wouldn't let them. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for you. Do you hear me? Do you? She won't budge on the bail issue, and I, I can't get a hearing till first thing in the morning. I'm afraid you're gonna have to spend at least a night here. No, no, I'll put up any amount of Nicholas. security they ask. Nicholas. Everything that we have, Alexis. Nicholas. 
I, I can speak to a judge first thing in the morning. It won't be necessary, Alexis. My attorney is here now. Good evening, Commissioner. Let it be understood that any interrogation of my client is to cease immediately. Nicholas, will you any give statements Alexis you may have given, a moment alone? I will consider them under duress. I'm sorry, I, um, I, I just assume... You misunderstand. I need you for something more important. For Nicholas. I won't have him see me go through the humiliation of being fingerprinted and photographed. I want you to take him home and stay with him. I will, I will. Without my protection, he is vulnerable to Spencer, to Helena. You'll do this for me. He wants me to take you home. You can't just leave him here, Alexis. Nicholas, it's a physical agony for him to have you see him like this. There's nothing we can do tonight other than leave him as much pride as possible. I want security fully staffed on all shifts. I won't take any chances. So what? You just let Luke win again? Huh? Can you now see that this is his fault, Alexis? It's certainly credible. <laughs> credible? It's a fact. <laughs> Can you now see why my father and my grandmother hated Luke so much? Huh? He's gonna burn for this. How are we going to get Lucky back home again where he belongs? That's what we should be discussing. Well, you saw him. What does that mean? Well, it's going to be a little tough getting the toothpaste back in the tube, don't you think? Look, Laura, I didn't want to open Pandora's box, believe me. But I had no choice. The monster walked in this house and took up residence here. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to say to the boy, just forget it. Come on home. Unmake your bed. It's not going to work. And I'm sorry if you feel that I did the wrong thing, if you feel that I gave him a false version of what happened that night, but there we are. No, 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 no. This is not about what happened 20 years ago. This is about what's going on right now today, which is your choosing to shut me out of both of my son's lives. That is the part that I find unacceptable. I had a right to help Lucky through this. How? Laura, you can't even say the word. You can't even say it to me. No, there no, There are certain I'm not things gonna, you no, can't help. I'm not going to let you turn this into anything that it isn't, OK? This is about one thing. You deliberately misled me. At best, at worst, you flat out lied to me. And I resent it. I resent it more than I can say. I think you're expressing yourself fairly clearly. Look. Maybe this evening would go a lot smoother for both of us if I just go to the club. If you must.
no point in placing the blame And you should know I suffer the same If I lose you, my heart will be broken Love is a bird, she needs to fly Let all the hurt inside of you die You're frozen when your heart's not open If I know your heart This is outrageous. I stand accused, not guilty. I am entitled to meet my nephew in my own clothing. What can I tell you? Your designer clothes aren't back from the dry cleaners. But don't worry, you'll get enough time to get used to what you're wearing. At the very least, I insist you remove these manacles. <laughs> Mr. Cassidyne, I don't know how they do things where you come from. But here, justice is somewhat like those handcuffs. One size fits all. You understand? Oh, yes. Perfectly. Yeah, come in. Have a seat. Keep the table between you at all times. Let's go. Oh, they're treating you. No worse than anyone else, I'm told. What about the food here? Oh, Mrs. Lansbury would weep. Now, what of you? Have the authorities been in touch? Alexis has managed to keep the detectives away from me for now, but I can't avoid them forever. When they do come around, I, I don't know what I'm going to say. The truth, of course. I am innocent. The truth will serve me best. Yeah, but what, what if they ask... What if they ask me about... About what? About you and Laura. Come on in, Sorry. Alexis. Framing my brother for murder was not part of our understanding. No, that was something I understood I was doing on my own. So the night that we planned to murder Helena, you planned this all along, right? Oh, no, no, I didn't. It was a generous gift of fate, and I would have been stupid and ungracious not to accept it. How dare you put that chisel on my brother's desk? Dagger. Whatever! Would you have kept your mouth shut and gone along with it? Of course not. Well, that's why I didn't tell you. You said that you were going to make Helena's death look like an accident. <sighs> yes, you I did. You lied to me. Well, I didn't mean to. And it's unfortunate an innocent person died, you know? But there's no polite way to do these things. And unfortunately, I can't ease your pain with a heart-wrenching display of guilt and remorse. You don't have any guilt or remorse. And I promise you, I will not let Stefan pay for this. Well, if he doesn't, you will. What is that supposed to mean? Suppose Helena had been a little more cooperative and smashed her skull on the cement at Windermere. Now, because she was such a popularity queen, the cops would have no doubt suspected that maybe that parapet had a little help in giving way. And who would have been their first suspect out of the chute? You, baby. <laughs> I get it now. You think that by incriminating Stefan, you were doing me a big favor. And me? I know you well enough to know that two hours of grilling by the cops downtown, and you'd have been singing plea bargain like Flo the Lost Supreme. Yeah, well, so you don't have anything to worry about now, because everything worked out just perfectly. We killed the wrong person. My brother is in jail, and Nicholas is beside himself. Well, there is that. And on the other hand, Kristen's daughter has everything she could ever want. Catherine's out of the way. Helena's on the lam. 
and Stefan's about to move you from the doghouse to the spare room. <laughs> hey, don't hijack this flight, Alexis. Not when you're about to be bumped up to first class. Nicholas, the police will not question you about Laura. What would she know about the night of Catherine's death? Well, nothing, I assume. She's still in North Carolina. But it's what I do know that bothers me. Now, look, there are some, some difficult details that, if, if taken the wrong way, of course, could be used against you. Such as? The ring. What of it? I don't think it's the first time that you've ever shown it to me. It belonged to my mother. I didn't think you remembered that. And the dress. You told Catherine it was an antique. All of which proves nothing. Yes, but it could give the police the one thing they don't have, and that's a motive. What, to murder Catherine? The idea is absurd. Uncle, if Max Scorpio gets it in his head that Catherine wasn't your first choice... He would have to ignore the rather significant fact that my intention was to marry her. But then there was the fight that you and Catherine had just before she fell. All right. So, in a blind rage, I ran to my study, recovered the dagger, came back outside to the parapet, worked the railing loose, dashed back inside, and coaxed Catherine to her death. But you're right. A foolish world takes things foolishly. What am I supposed to do? Well, it might be wise not to volunteer such details. But please do not jeopardize yourself by withholding information if you're asked for it. And above all, do not lie. For my sake, no less than yours. I won't. Good. It will serve no purpose. All right, there's probably something else you should know. Helena's disappeared. When? No one knows exactly, but the yacht's gone. If you ask me, it's the best news we've had in a while. No. When she was here, we could keep track of her movements. An invisible Helena is far more dangerous. Don't try to sell me on my own life, Luke. Well, babe, somebody's got to. I, the life, I might add, is worth absolutely nothing, thanks to you. Now that Helene is aware of an assassination attempt, well, that she was the target of one, I'm sure she's going to return the favor any time now. Maybe. Maybe not. Not right away. You know, I mean, you did get Stefan out of the way for her. Just for a moment, so you can relax, because a sharp attorney is going to be able to get him off. Yeah, but an even sharper one can bury him. You're a lawyer. You know how Helena thinks. I mean, with Stefan in the cooler. You are holding all the cards, aren't you? Concentrate on that. That means that little Nikki is going to need you. You starting to see the possibilities? You're revolting. I like you, too. But I like you better when you're not playing the sniveling sap. Come on, Natasha, it's payback time. With all these people out of the way, here's the little prince, right? But you have the possibility now of being the regent, the real power behind the throne. Me? Yeah, you. Look at it. Mikos and Stavros are worm food. Helena's on the lamb. Stefan's in the cooler. The whole Casadine enchilada is laying there right in front of you, if you've got the stomach for it. So what's it going to be? Are you going to get Stefan off? and then spend the rest of your life groveling and, and hoping for his gratitude? Or are you going to bury him and finally be your own woman at last? Nicholas, in truth, your grandmother has not disappeared. She's merely retreated, temporarily. Why? Most likely to plot her next move on you, unobserved. Helena can't gain control of my inheritance unless you're convicted, and that will not happen. At the moment, my concern is not an attack on the Cassidyne fortune. It is you my mother wants, the Cassidyne future. 
Now, she has already tried insinuating herself into your life. Unsuccessfully. Indeed. Therefore, her next move might be more aggressive. You must keep Alexis informed of your whereabouts at all times. And trust her now? I trust her to love you and to fear Helena. So when in doubt, heed her advice. This travesty is just the sort of opportunity your grandmother's been waiting for. You're very clever, very pragmatic, very sensible. I'm so sorry that I ever met you, let alone joined forces with you I knew. I knew that I should never have trusted you. Alexis, what we have is deeper than love and more valuable than trust. We have common purpose. We want the same thing. No, we don't. I want Catherine alive again. You could care less that she ever died. Believe it or not, Catherine was okay with me. She wasn't very bright, but that wasn't her fault. She knew this town. She knew the measure of it and how to get what she wanted out of that. Until she met Stefan, of course. And I warned her. I told her one day he would get her killed. Let's get something straight, all right? You got her killed, Luke. You did. Really? I don't think so. I didn't take her up to that parapet. She wouldn't have been up there if it weren't for Stefan. And unless you want to take a tumble, woman, you should realize that anybody who gets mixed up with Cassidine men is going to live to regret it if she lives. Are you talking about your sister or your wife? You, partner. You. Stefan is an illness that you need to recover from before it turns terminal. And if you go all soft and gushy on me and you run in there and you try to save him, I'm telling you, I guarantee you, one day soon he will find out how Catherine really died, who was responsible. And then, he will kill you. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to finish this drink and get out of here so I don't scare off your clientele. Hey, relax, man. Enjoy your drink. In fact, let me top it off for you. Thank you. If we didn't serve pariahs around here, my friend. <laughs> We'd lose half our customers and both the owners. Well, thank you very much. Friendly gestures are as appreciated as they are rare. Does that explain your date at the dreaded mask ball? I didn't see you there. Well, Tony, you know, if you hang out with Helena Cassidine, people are going to talk. Well, I always hate to disappoint people, but after she finished shocking everyone, Helena ditched me, and I haven't heard from her since. And you know you're in trouble when someone like that thinks that you're unfit company. Well, you, you fit enough for my place. Ah, well, thank you. A full glass is my best friend these days, since the rest of the world is uh, not going to forgive me for loving Michael and acting like it. You know, I was right to remove that child from the home of a gangster, and I don't apologize for that, but... Well, Robin's a different thing. I do regret that. I never intended to put her at risk. I know that. You do? Yeah, she came to the cabin to confront you and uh, got stuck in the middle. You didn't intend that. You know, you're taking this customer is always right just a little bit far with me right now. Right. Uh, look, Doc, ex pro in law I don't know what right is, OK? You're human. You sensed that someone you love was in danger, so you stepped in. Some innocent person got caught in the crossfire. That wasn't your choice. That was bad luck. It wasn't evil intention. <clears throat> well. There's others that might beg to differ with you. That's all right. I got insurance. <laughs> well, I'll try to keep your premiums down. <sighs> you served him and chatted with him, the man who kidnapped my grandson. 
I'm sorry, I didn't know you had a visitor. Hello, Alexis. <clears throat> Stefan, I need to speak with you. Nicholas. Hi. Robin. Hey, you here to see Mac? No, I uh, I called Windermere after I heard about your uncle's arrest. They told me you were here. Have you been waiting for me? Not for long. Why? I know how painful it is to see someone you love brought to a place like this. How are you doing? I am so furious right now. Someone's trying to destroy my uncle, and the police are going right along with it. Hey, Robin, you were at my house that night. You saw my uncle and Catherine together. Didn't look like a murder in the making to you. It's hard to imagine. Then again, it's hard to imagine that Catherine's gone at all. My uncle and I were close to her for so long. Yeah, I know. I can't stop wondering if... What? No. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna express my anger towards someone that you care about. What, my uncle Mac? Yeah. He, he was in love with Catherine once before himself. That had to play a role in, his, in my uncle's arrest. No, 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 no. Catherine meant a lot to my uncle. But so does the truth. If Stefan is being set up, he's gonna find out who it is. How are you managing? It was endurable until I had to receive Nicholas in this manner. That was perhaps the most humiliating moment of my life. He knows that you didn't hurt Catherine. I would hope so. He did seem concerned by some minor aspects of the case that could reflect badly on me should they be revealed to the police. I told him to speak only the truth if he was asked about them. Please see that he does. I can do that. Let me handle your defense. I'm already represented by a very able counsel. I know. Sanders is, is, is an expert at circumstantial evidence, but this is a case about a man's soul, and that's a subject of which I have a bit of expertise. Acquired at no little cost. It's knowledge that can save you. If the jury doubts the evidence of the dagger, they need to trust the evidence of the man. I know that man, and no one can represent you better than I can. Let me help you. Trust me with your life.